Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we want to work on finding limits with infinity using their equations. Okay? So we have two types of limits that involve infinity one where the x approaches infinity, and one where possibly the function approaches infinity. And as we're going through these examples, uh, notice how we're picking out uh, some key differences or, or really what uh, parts of the entire equation we're really looking at. Okay? So first, let me give you some quick tips on, say, the limits that could go towards infinity or negative infinity. Uh, a lot of the functions that do this type of behavior uh, often involve rational expressions, or think of fractions. So if you have x approaching an undefined value, that's usually your key that, you know, we're going to have a limit that goes towards infinity or negative infinity. And here's how you can usually spot that. So if you're looking at your function and you notice that there's a fraction in it somewhere, and the bottom of that fraction just keeps getting smaller and smaller as, say, x is approaching a value. Well, as the bottom of that fraction just keeps getting smaller and small, smaller, that's your indication that the entire fraction is actually getting larger. So something like this could go towards positive or negative infinity. Now you might be asking, well, well how can you really tell if it's going towards positive or the negative? Well, that depends on whether the uh, bottom is positive or negative or whether the top is positive or negative. So you really have to keep track of the signs if you notice that the bottom of the fraction just keeps getting smaller and smaller. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense as we get into the examples, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So I want to find the limit of all of these guys. And starting with the first one, I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 3 from the right side. Now here's the first thing I want to point out. If I was to just substitute 3 in here directly, I'd get an undefined value on the bottom. I can't divide by 0. So this is my clue that, wait a minute, this probably has a limit uh, that goes towards infinity. Okay? So how can we really figure out whether it's positive or negative infinity? Well, we really have to think of the signs that are happening, say, on the top and bottom. All right, let's go ahead and examine the bottom a little bit. So I'm approaching 3, but I'm approaching 3 from the right side. That means I'll have values that are just a little bit larger than 3, something like maybe 3.001. So if I was using values like this in for x, and then I subtracted away a 3, I would end up with something very, very small, but definitely positive. So here's what you want to notice. The bottom is definitely getting small, but it's staying positive and small. Okay. Meanwhile, what's happening on the top of this entire thing? Well, it looks like it's stuck at 5. But more importantly, it's a positive 5. Okay, so I know this is going towards infinity. And because I'll have a positive value over another positive value, I know that this is actually going towards a positive infinity. All right, so as you can see, just like that, you can figure out the limit. All right, let's do another one and see how we can carefully pick out this value. So I want to know what is the limit as x approaches negative 8 from the right of x all divided by x plus x. I mean x plus 8. Okay, now look at this one. Again, if I was to try and directly substitute in a negative 8 for x, I'd get a 0 on the bottom and it'd be undefined. So there's our clue that we're probably looking for a limit that goes to infinity or negative infinity. Okay, now let's see uh, the signs of what's happening here. So negative 8 is what x is going towards, and it's being approached from the right side again. So what kind of values are those, you know, if I was on the right side of negative 8? Well, a value might be something like negative 7.99, or, you know, something just on the right side of it. Now, if I was to use a value like this, and plug it in for x, and then add 8, notice how the result would be a positive 0.01. So, you know, here's what we can really uh, uh, take from that. Yes, the bottom is getting small, but it's getting small and it's staying positive since we're approaching on the right side. All right, now let's observe what's happening to the top of this. So the top is simply just an x and it's approaching a negative eight. So, you know, the top wants to be a negative eight in a sense, but the important part is it wants to be negative. So I know this thing will be headed towards infinity, but I'll have a negative divided by a positive, so this is all headed towards negative infinity. All right, let's try one more of these, see how you do. 
And in this last one, we have the limit as x approaches 4 from the left side of negative 3 divided by 4 minus x, and all of the bottom is being squared. Okay, so we have that undefined value if I was trying to use uh, 4 in for x, because 4 minus 4, that'd be a 0. We don't want that. So we're approaching 4, but we're doing it from the left side of 4. So let's see, imagine what values we're putting in there. Maybe something like 3.99, something really close to 4. Uh, and that would be going in for this x right here. So if I was taking 4 and minusing something like 3.99, I would get a positive value. And it's definitely a very small positive value. Also, I have to take into account that things are being squared. So not only are they getting, uh, say, positive and small, but we're also going ahead and squaring that value. Now, the effect that the square has is, of course, positive times a positive would give me another positive value. All right, what's happening on the top? Well, there is really no x. It's simply stuck at a negative 3. So here's another one of those instances. I can see the bottom's getting small, and I have a negative divided by a positive. Uh, therefore, this asymptote is going towards negative infinity. So again, I recommend watching for those two things. Are you approaching an undefined value? And then is the bottom getting arbitrarily small? All right, let's look at the other type of limit. Uh, a lot of other ones that involve, say, uh, infinity, uh, are, are ones where you have x approaching infinity. And for those, you really want to key in on the larger powers of x, okay? And here are the different situations that you're going to look for as x is approaching, say, positive or negative infinity. If you have your largest power on the top and bottom actually the same, then you'll be able to compute the limit, and it'll actually come from the leading coefficients of each of those uh, powers of x. If the largest power is on the bottom, then be careful, then you're essentially uh, computing the limit and it's going to be zero. If the largest power is on the top, then there actually is no horizontal asymptote and the entire function is again wanting to go towards infinity or negative infinity, uh, but it doesn't really approach a, a single value. Okay, so watch how we pick these out of the next examples. We want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x plus 2 all over 2x plus 8. So these are different from the other ones uh, because now x is actually approaching the infinity. Now here's how we're going to find it. We're going to find the largest power of the x in the top and the bottom, and we're going to see what case it falls in. So let's see, I have an x in the top and x in the bottom. Those powers are the same, so I know that the limit exists, and it'll actually come from taking these two leading coefficients. So what's the limit of this guy? You could say 4 over 2, or simply 2. The function wants to approach 2. All right, let's do the next one. And notice how this one is actually approaching negative infinity. A lot of people, you know, look at that and say, oh, wait, do I have to be worried that uh, my values are now going negative? Uh, no, not necessarily. You're, again, just looking for the largest power on the top and bottom and, and comparing them and seeing, you know, how they fall out. Are they the same as largest one on the top or bottom, etc. All right, so looking at this one, uh, I have an x plus 11 all over an x cubed plus 16. And here, the largest power is actually on the bottom, okay? So since it is on the bottom, I can say that the limit of this one is 0. And done just like that. All right, let's do one more. This one I decided to throw in a square root. So the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of 25x to the fifth minus 3 over 9x to the fifth plus x. We're looking for the largest power here, and I can see an x to the fifth and an x to the fifth. Both of them do happen to be underneath the square root, but you know, since it's being applied to both, then I really can consider these the same power. Okay, so since they are the same, uh, we will start off by taking those leading coefficients. One thing you do want to be aware of, though, things are underneath that square root. So we'll go ahead and borrow that as well. 25 over 9, all underneath the square root. So things are going to 5 thirds. So if you watch out for those key, difference, uh, key differences when doing these uh, types of limits, you'll see that finding them is not too bad. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.